In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Dominus Vobiscum. Dearly beloved in Christ, today we celebrate that which is regarded as the source and summit of our Christian faith. We celebrate in a special way that which we celebrate at every Mass. Today we celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi, the most holy body and blood of Christ. At this Mass, we shall be thanking God for the gift of this august sacrament, this sacrament which makes us one with Christ, this sacrament, which strengthens, nourishes, and renews us. To be able to celebrate this Mass worthily, let us pause for a while, remembering those moments we have seen by virtue of our thoughts, words, and actions. Let us ask for pardon and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my works, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses went and told the people all the commands of the Lord and all the ordinances. In answer, all the people said with one voice, we will observe all the commands that the Lord has decreed. Moses put all the commands of the Lord into writing. And early next morning, he built an altar at the foot of the mountain with 12 standing stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he directed certain young Israelites to offer holocaust and to immolate bullocks to the Lord as communion sacrifices. Half of the blood Moses took up and put into basins. The other half he cast on the altar. And taking the book of the covenant, he read it to the listening people. And they said, we will observe all that the Lord has decreed, we will obey. Then Moses took the blood and cast it towards the people. This, he said, is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, containing all these rules. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now Christ has come as the high priest of all the blessings which were to come. He has passed through the greater, the more perfect tent, which is better than the one made by men's hands, because it is not of this created order. And he has entered the sanctuary once and for all, taking with him not the blood of goats and bull cows, but his own blood, having won an eternal redemption for us. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer are sprinkled on those who have incurred defilement, and they restore the holiness of their outward lives how much more effectively the blood of Christ, who offered himself as the perfect sacrifice to God through the eternal spirit, can purify our inner selves from dead actions so that we do our service to the living God. He brings a new covenant as the mediator, only so that the people who were called to an eternal inheritance may actually receive what was promised. His death took place to cancel the sins that infringed the earlier covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him and say to the owner of the house which he enters, The master says, Where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city 
and found everything as he had told them, and prepared the Passover. And as they were eating, he took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them. Take it, he said, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms have been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. Evangelidomini. Dearly beloved in Christ, today we celebrate, as I said at the beginning of the Mass, that which has been regarded as the source and summit of our Christian faith, the Eucharist. Indeed, take away the Eucharist and you don't have the church. Take away the church and there is no Eucharist. So that, which is the source and summit of our faith to celebrate, that which is what Christ left for us as a lasting memorial of his passion and his death. That which emulates, which sanctifies, that which cleanses. Christ becomes the priest, the altar, and the animal of sacrifice. He perfects that which God instituted in ages past. In our first reading, we see Moses offer sacrifice on behalf of the people, a sacrifice to cleanse the people who have sinned, a sacrifice to bring about communion with God. We see in Exodus chapter 12, God commanded Moses to institute the Passover. And he told him that this Passover is to be observed for all generations, even when they should enter the promised land he had prepared for them. In verses 43 to 44 of Exodus 12, he says, no foreigner should partake of this Passover. If a slave is to partake of it, he must be circumcised. Now, this foreshadows that which will happen eventually with Christ. Again, we see this further foreshadowed by the experience of the Jews in the desert. They received bread from heaven, manna, and they received water from the rock. But Christ will eventually tell them in John 6 that he is the living bread, the bread that came down from heaven. For the ancestors of the Jews ate the manna, yet they died. But his body, which he offers, those who partake of his body, those who eat his body, shall never die. And he made a statement they could not come to terms with. John 6, 53 said, I tell you solemnly, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, 
you shall not have life in you. And we are told that many of his disciples left him. But to tell us or to make us understand that it is necessary for us to partake of his body and blood to have eternal life, Jesus did not beg those who chose to walk away. This is hard teaching, they said. How can he tell us to eat his body and drink his blood? And they walked away. But rather than beg them to come back, what did he do? He turned to the twelve and he asked them, do you want to go to? And it was Peter who spoke up. Lord, to whom shall we turn to? You have the message of eternal life. Dearly beloved, we see in our gospel reading, Christ bringing to fulfillment that which was established through the Passover meal. Every Jew observed the Passover following God's command, that command which he gave to them while they were still in Egypt when the sacrifice was established, the Passover meal. He said, observe this feast for all generations. In fact, he told them, when your children should ask you what this is about, make them to understand that this is to commemorate the night the Lord set us free in the land of Egypt. For 430 years, they had been in Egypt. And when the Lord said it was time to set them free, that night the angel of death passed by. They had the blood of the unblemished land put on the doorposts, put on the lintels, and the angel of death passed over those houses, but struck the firstborn, man and animal alike, of the Egyptians. In the same way, Christ's blood becomes the blood that saves us. He offered himself, and we are told in the letter to the Hebrews, our second reading, that that which the blood of bulls and goats and calves could not achieve, when the high priest offered the sacrifice, entering into the Holy of Holies once in a year, Christ's blood perfects. So the high priest offered the sacrifice on behalf of the people with the blood of bulls and calves. But Christ becomes the altar. He becomes the high priest. He becomes the animal of sacrifice. He offers himself to bring us that communion, that union with God. And he tells us that unless we eat his body, unless we participate in this sacrifice, we cannot have eternal life. How sad it is that many Catholics today have abandoned this great sacrament which Christ has given us. How sad it is that many Catholics will rather sing, dance, clap, but will not partake of the Eucharist. The very commandment Christ left on the night before he was crucified, he said, this is my body. He took the cup and he said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, the new covenant which perfects the old, that which was done on that first Passover night is perfected with his blood. That which was done by Moses, offering sacrifice on behalf of the people, was perfected on the night before he was crucified. And he said to the people, continue to do this until I come. Sadly, that commandment, that injunction, had been set aside by many Catholics. 
Many Catholics have chosen to walk away from the sacraments. Many Catholics have chosen to separate themselves from Christ. For even St. Paul, though he did not meet Christ physically, while he was still on earth, he only met him on the road to Damascus. We say in 1 Corinthians 11, for this is what I received from the Lord. That on the night he was crucified, he took bread. He took the chalice. And when he offered the cup, he said, this is the, blo the blood of the new covenant. So St. Paul makes us understand that this Eucharist was very essential or is very essential to our Christian life and faith. And so the early church, we are told in the Acts of the Apostles, gathered together for the breaking of bread. How then can we call ourselves Christians? How can we be followers of Christ if we refuse to partake of the Eucharist? Or we choose to receive the Eucharist unworthily, as St. Paul warns us. That those who choose to partake of the Eucharist without examining themselves bring condemnation upon themselves. No wonder St. Augustine tells us that when we receive the Eucharist worthily, we become Christ-like. This sacrament, this food for the journey, viaticum, this bread of angels, as described by St. Thomas Aquinas, makes us Christ-like. The food we receive, we become like the food. Unlike the physical food, which becomes our body, we, in receiving Christ, become Christ-like. But St. Augustine warns that those who receive this sacrament unworthily in mortal sin do not receive any grace. Rather, he said, it is like feeding a corpse, a dead body, with food. Of course, for when we are in mortal sin, we die. The word mortal, from the Latin, more mortis, to die, death. So in mortal sin, when we receive this sacrament, it has no effect. There is no grace. So St. Augustine says this is like feeding a dead animal with food. Of course, it can have no impact on that animal because that animal is already dead. But that which is living gets nourished and strengthened by the food he receives. So this spiritual food which Christ has left us, we ought to celebrate. This spiritual food which Christ has given us, we have to embrace. This bread of angels that unites us with God, we need to venerate, adore, and cherish. Dearly beloved, today, let us thank God for this wonderful gift he has given to us. Christ promised that he will be with us for all times. He comes to us not only in word, but in sacraments. And in a very unique way, he comes to us in this sacrament. For we are taught that every time we receive Jesus in Holy Communion, we receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity. Forget the appearance of bread and wine. We have many Eucharistic miracles to testify that that which we receive is indeed the body and blood of Christ. Let us not take for granted that which God offers us, his body and blood. And I say to you, dearly beloved in Christ, 
He has told us that unless we eat his body and drink his blood, we shall not have life. So whatever it is that is separating us from communion, from union with Christ, it is never too late to amend, to amend and to rectify this. If for any reason you do not receive the Eucharist, or you have stopped receiving the Eucharist, today I say to you, please see your priest. Come to terms with this essential reconciliation before it is too late. Do not reject the love Christ offers us. He has offered us himself. Let us rather embrace this. And as we receive him, let us continue to pray that we'll become more Christ-like for this is the essence of this sacrament, to strengthen, to heal, and to grant us the grace to be Christ to others. We pray that we do not take this sacrament for granted, but that as we receive this sacrament, we may be drawn ever closer to the one who laid down his life for us. This is our prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
by offering himself for us, Jesus bound us to the Father in the new and everlasting covenant. As we renew the covenant by offering the same sacrifice of his body and blood, let us intercede through him for the need of others. For the church, offering this sacrifice of adoration that all members may be strengthened for priestly work in the world. We pray, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our nation, Nigeria, that this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving may help all citizens look to God with gratitude. We pray, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For young people, that our sacrifice of intercession may gain more vocations to priestly service. We pray, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this Eucharistic community, that we may receive our Lord Jesus worthily, frequently, and reverently. And for our private intentions, let us talk to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Grant the petitions we make as we are one in celebrating the holy mystery of the body and blood of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Be 
my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Bobis cum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Sosum cordo. Amemus Dominus. Agamus Dominus Dei Truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial, as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. So You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. We proclaim your the Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Dominic, St. Catherine of Siena, Pope St. John Paul II, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for your unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on it with your servant Francis, our Pope, Alfred, Adewale Martin's Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Per ipso met cum ipso et in ipso estibidio patri omnipotenti in unitate spiritu sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Receptis salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, how they must be cherished. Oh. 
God, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are to and gloom and Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take Took away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ brings us to the last thing. Acts of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Holy Communion. O sacraments most holy, O sacrament divine, all, all praise and all thanksgiving, be every, every moment thine. 
O sacraments most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacraments most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O oh God, our help in ages past, we, your children, humbly implore your mercy at this time of adversity. We are devastated by the coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the whole world, snuffing life out of your people and spreading fear everywhere. You are the God of life, and nothing is impossible to you. He asks us to call on you in the day of trouble, and you will answer us. We know that we are sinners who are unworthy of your favors. Although we have no merits of our own to plead before you, we stand on the merits of the death and resurrection of Christ and plead his saving blood over our lives and situation. We ask you to be merciful to us and save us from this scourge that is devastating the world. Be gracious to us and speak life and healing into the present coronavirus scourge and command it to depart from our world. Give leaders of governments and scientists divine wisdom and knowledge to take the right decisions and to discover the medication needed to cure people who are infected with this virus. Protect all health workers and volunteers. Look with pity on those who are already infected with this deadly virus and heal them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died from it and comfort those they left behind to mourn their demise. Lord, through this scourge, may the hearts of many be turned back to you, their Creator. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. All angels and saints of God, Pray for us. May Our Lady, Mother of the Church, the health of the sick, intercede for the whole world. Amen. Amen. Oremos. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by a reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Dearly beloved, as we celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi, we thank God once again for this wonderful sacrament he has left us. Our church, our faith is built around this sacrament that Christ who asks that we be baptized in the name of the Trinity chooses to give us this sacrament that we will always be one with him. It's a day of joy for us all. And so I thank all of you who continue to make it possible for us to celebrate this sacrament. I wish to thank you, our liturgical functionaries, I wish to thank our brother, Reverend Tony Willey. I wish in a very special way, again and again, to thank our chief collaborators, 
the management and staff of R2 TV. We can't stop thanking you. Now we celebrate this sacrament and people out there can be a part of this virtually on R2 TV, channel 112, on Go TV, is because you have made it possible. Thank you very much. God bless you. And as you partake of this sacrament, may God continue to strengthen and nourish you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Traditionally, there's supposed to be a second part to this Mass, which is the procession. But of course, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria, bearing in mind that this is the rainy season, has said that this second part, the Corpus Christi procession, is celebrated always with the solemnity of Christ the King on the last Sunday in ordinary time. So let us bear that in mind, but let us also be part of the Eucharistic adoration and benediction which will come up later today. We continue to venerate Christ present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. And as we do this, may we be more Christ-like through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. So for all our viewers, thank you, and may God continue to bless you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Vobis Cum. Benedicat vos omnipotes Deus Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Bless the Lord.